All right. I think we're live and we can get things kicked off. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Nick uh, from the TA team here at Mercari. Um, thanks for making time to join in uh, on our event today, uh, which will be covering basically how Mercari attracts diverse talents. Um, so getting into things, as you can see, we have a lot of content to cover today. Um, really kind of our, our main areas are gonna be focused around hiring, benefits, inclusion, uh, and our team, the TA team. Uh, we'll have a lot of great speakers from the TA team joining us today, as well as our CHRO, Tatsu-san. Um, a quick heads up, we will be uh, having a quick uh, survey towards the end of the presentation today. So um, if time allows, please try and stay till the end. Uh, the feedback that you give us from that survey really helps us to improve these events uh, moving forward. So getting into things. Uh, yes, this is me. Uh, I My Slack name at the company is Angelone because there's a lot of people named Nicholas. <laughs> so for the sake of simplicity, I went with this one. Uh, I just joined Mercari in April of 2021 as a technical recruiter. Um, really kind of my main background has been in technical recruitment for the majority of my career, uh, mainly focusing on hiring like ML engineers, mobile application developers, recently focus on security as well. And I'm a very firm believer in using a lot of different channels to source and interact with different candidates, not just here based in Japan, but also based around the world. So that's me. Uh, I do want to move on to a bit about the company as well. For those of us who don't know us, uh, I think if you're based in Japan, maybe you've probably used uh, the Mercari app before or seen like an ad um, somewhere around. So basically, uh, we launched the app in 2013, serving as a C2C marketplace, uh, mainly for secondhand items. It was created from the idea of basically wanting to kind of circulate uh, our limited resources to help society thrive. And, and we can do that by basically having our users buy and sell goods to each other from a user to user standpoint. Um, outside of Mercari, we also have a couple other businesses uh, on the slide here. We have Merpay, Mercari US. So really as we kind of continue to grow as a company, we're expanding into a lot of different areas, both technological and geographical as evidenced by um, Mercari US. And in April of 2021, very recently, uh, we saw Mercoin established, basically for the planning and development of crypto asset and blockchain related services. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely uh, keep your eye out um, on, on our businesses and, and what we're working on, because there's some really exciting things to come. So um, getting into kind of the bulk of our presentation today and, and what we'll be focusing on covering. Uh, it's it's really around kind of Mercari and, and DNI at Mercari. So we have basically a lot of members from diverse backgrounds at Mercari and we're actively encouraging activities um, around and supporting diversity and inclusion. So this event uh, has also been initiated from, from these amazing communities that we have at Mercari and um, guests and, and people who jump in to support these things and, and volunteering as well. So our employees basically engage in different activities uh, throughout these groups to help promote diversity and inclusion in the workplace, whether that's via events or education. And you can see a couple of them up here on the slide. Uh, you can check out Pride there, um, Women at, Multicultural at. Uh, there's a lot of really cool and interesting groups here. And that's a really important part uh, of the Mercari employee community. So um, we'll go through kind of why that is uh, in my kind of main part of the uh, presentation that I'll be covering today. And that's uh, attracting diverse talents, finding, attract, finding diverse talents, attracting diverse talents, interacting with, with a lot of different people, um, both here in Japan and around the world. Why is it important and how do we do it? So hiring talent that comes from different backgrounds basically can be beneficial for teams in the long run. We see improvements in different areas such as creativity and innovation, productivity. You can also see it in kind of a boost in a branding that equates to showing potential candidates that you have an inclusive workplace as well. And all of these can be kind of linked to finding and hiring some of the best talent in the market. So how do we view uh, these diverse talents and just what exactly does that mean? 
and um, really we'll kind of talk about the, uh, the diversity in, in teams here at Mercari and, and coming into a lot of different shapes and sizes. So diversity in teams doesn't really have, you know, one solid uh, definition. So because of this, finding diverse talents requires looking into the teams that you're hiring for and understanding on a deeper level the specific type of talent that would benefit uh, from them in the long run. So kind of listed on the slide here, we have um, a few examples of what that talent may look like from traits to backgrounds. We can hire people for teams in order to increase productivity, creativity. So um, we'll go ahead and kind of take a look at a specific example, a hypothetical example uh, of what this might look like. Um, this isn't really kind of based on any kind of specific product or services, just kind of a really quick example. So um, we have the classic uh, story of employee X and that's that will be our, our start here. So employee X uh, is basically a software engineer who is part of a team that's about to develop a new product uh, feature that will basically allow um, audio attachments for users to listen to. Um, Again, there's no specific kind of product or feature for the sake of simplicity. We'll just say that there is going to be a, a new feature basically attached to um, a product or service that allows users to listen to audio attachments. So uh, employee X really thinks that this new feature is a great idea, but they also wonder kind of, you know, how can they use it since um, they have a hearing impairment? Um, so since unfortunately they may be used to kind of dealing uh, with situations where they, they could potentially be uh, excluded um, from things in day-to-day -day life, Employee X decides to propose an idea that would allow users with hearing impairments to be able to use this new feature. And here's the idea. It would be subtitles along with the audio. On paper, something that seems quite simple. Uh, in reality, something that is uh, certainly a bit harder to, to implement. So the team listens to the idea and uh, the lead engineer thinks, you know, wow, I never even thought about that. We should develop this feature so that as many users as possible can use it. So the idea is proposed and implemented into the new um, feature where over time it's kind of fine tuned to make it easier for the maximum amount of users to access it. So for example, had employee X not been there, this feature would have likely not included subtitles for an extended period of time. And feedback from the users who would have been the main reason uh, basically this would be implemented would be the main cause of it being implemented. So you'd get, you'd get users who say, I'm unable to use this, here's the reason why. And through that negative feedback, um, you would have the team start to implement something like that later down the line. We've been able to avoid that since employee X was already a part of the team and able to suggest something like that. So from this example, we know employee X is, is really, really smart. Uh, we'd love to have them on their team, but how can we find them and how can we hire them? So we'll go into talking about uh, some of the, the things to kind of watch out for here when it comes to sourcing when it comes to communication and, and actually finding um, people who are going to be a really great fit for your team uh, who you may not have normally found uh, in the first place through through your usual sourcing. So there are really kind of two things we need to be aware of when it comes to finding and hiring diverse talent. Um, you don't want to view hiring diverse talent as a task to simply hit a target. Um, understand really the benefits behind that and make an effort to understand how that's actually good uh, for your teams. And as mentioned earlier, um, you know, diverse talent comes in an infinite number of, of shapes and sizes and, and try not to kind of limit yourself to a single pool of talent, which I'll get into in just a moment. Um, for sourcing really, source with the understanding that different talents can be reached via different channels. Avoid using a single channel, you know, edit your templates with care Clarity is key here. Um, understand the profiles you're reaching out to and why you're reaching out to people. Um, for communicating with hiring managers, you want to kind of relay hiring pitfalls with them. Push back on statements like, you know, our next hire must be diverse. Clarify with your hiring manager what exactly that means. Instead, you want to have those teams focus on creating an atmosphere that naturally welcomes talents from all backgrounds. The rest then comes naturally. So um, you want to treat people, uh, 
you want to treat your qualified professionals as qualified professionals. You know, avoid things and reach outs such as we're looking for diverse talent such as yourself and replace that with your background in XYZ is an amazing fit for this position that I'm hiring for. And I'd love to have a chat with you about it. So um, really kind of the point to drive home here is the uh, is hiring individuals with um, different backgrounds uh, will improve the team over time kind of naturally. Um, and we'll get into that communication about um, hiring with hiring managers. And we'll also get into the communication around um, bringing in talent from different uh, channels into your teams to hire. Uh, and that will be covered here. So once sourcing, there are gonna be a few things to, to be aware of. The most important is that you'll want to use a wide variety of channels to find talent. You know, not everybody is on, for example, like LinkedIn, while it may be a great platform or whichever platform you tend to use. Uh, while we generally gravitate towards a platform that gives us a lot of hires, uh, you essentially limit uh, the talent pool that you have access to over a longer period of time. So for this slide, the graphic on the left, we see our hiring manager. So that person down on the bottom of the slide is the hiring manager, who's really happy with their positions being filled. Um, but they're only being filled from one channel, or let's say in this case, to make it a, a bit more simpler, um, from a specific company. So this mindset um, is something that you're really kind of gonna wanna avoid uh, working with with your hiring managers, because in the short term, it's, you know, it's great to fill roles and get hires, but you'll fall into the trap of only using this single channel, or in this case, a single company to find those hires. So if you're only hiring from one place, um, you have that corporate culture then being brought in uh, to your company. In some cases that can match and that's really great. And in some cases that might not be a great match and there could be a lot of different clashes. Whereas on the right side, we see our same hiring manager here uh, who's loving the ideas proposed by all of the hires that you found using your different channels. Um, in this case, these could be different companies or they could be people from different backgrounds. It could be somebody who's been very academic, somebody who's been very corporate, anything really. So we could have found these people anywhere. Um, you know, LinkedIn could have been on GitHub if we're searching for engineers, things like that. Um, it could have been from a presentation uh, online about a topic related to the position uh, that we're hiring for. So it could really come from anywhere. There's a lot of cool places to, to look and find um, really smart and talented people. So this kind of creative sourcing, uh, while in the short term, it's it's a bit tough to kind of get started on. It may not seem like the most attractive approach to, to filling your positions and getting those hires. The long term benefits are, are absolutely there. So, um, you know, not only would your hiring manager be thankful, uh, you'll also be benefiting your hiring team and the organization as a whole from bringing in these people with um, unique backgrounds and unique ideas to propose things that might be totally out of the norm in terms of projects and initiatives that could have a positive impact on the organization. So um, in short, uh, basically we, we need to realize that talent doesn't all kind of flock to one channel. You wanna try new things, up your sourcing game, work with recruitment team to share knowledge about best sourcing practices. Uh, you want to try to dedicate specific time to finding talent, um, make an effort to step out of your usual channels and into another one that you may have never used before. There's a lot of really great resources, uh, videos online about how to efficiently use different platforms to, to source and, and interact with different people from all over the world. Um, you know, as it's called these days, uh, you know, d and hiring efforts, it, it's not really an, an activity used to hit a quota. As mentioned earlier, you want to understand the teams that you're hiring for in the areas where they may be lacking. Um, if those teams don't already have an inclusive environment, find the reasoning as to why and how that can be changed. So really, this should be viewed as kind of a long term initiative and not solely run by the recruitment team but uh, with cooperation from other departments and teams as well. By doing this, um, you kind of get everybody on board, expand the understanding as to the benefits of, of hiring in these areas. Um, and yeah, it's gonna really kind of benefit the organization as a whole. So that's it uh, for my part of the presentation today. 
Um, if you'd like to add me on LinkedIn and, and kind of uh, continue this discussion, feel free to um, send a request my way. I'd be more than happy to, to accept and uh, continue the discussion about that. I'd like to go ahead and um, bring up my colleague, Jess, to talk about the uh, Maricari d and track project. Hi. Hello, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Nick, for the inspiring topic. Thank you so much. So um, moving on to my part, I'm going to talk about the Mercury DNI Attract project. But before going into what is this, let me quickly introduce myself first. Yeah. So my name is Jessica, and I have joined uh, Mercury in late 2018. It's been around two and a half years now. And my main role here is a technical recruiter in charge of positions in the engineering division. Other than hiring, we also have other projects like improving candidate experience, uh, platform or tools implementation, etc. And one of the main projects is the DNI uh, Attract project that I'm going to talk about. Before joining Mercury, I also had uh, around two years of experience in the agency side and uh, also some non-recruitment related work experience back in Hong Kong. So in today's section, I hope to give you an overview about this project, uh, how we kick started with some early stages analysis and goal settings, and uh, some of the activities or outreach efforts we have made, and lastly, some thoughts about the challenges and some future ideas to share with you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what is this? project called uh, DNI Attract. So in short, it's a DNI project group, but focusing on hiring and talent outreach. The main members are from talent acquisition, but we also gain help from other teams like uh, hiring management, PR, data management, et cetera, et cetera, or other members or other volunteers in the DNI communities. Um, for the main members, we approximately use 20% of work time to work on this project. And uh, well, it's mostly spent on the task, uh, on the task or maybe some uh, team meetings and alignment with other uh, organizations. Yeah. So how did we come to here uh, where we are now is actually both a bottom up and top down approach. This timeline is especially interesting that it shows that we first started as a DNI club with volunteers and I also joined that for a while when I first joined the company. In 2019, there is an official DNI team established, a statement announced it, and gradually evolved into a paradise topic to be discussed on the uh, executive level in 2020. And this is exactly when uh, the DNI project and council started. Uh, this is definitely not easy to get this started and needs a lot of passionate members and their voices, not only from HL. So a big shout to each and every one of them. Yeah. Here, um, I also want to show roughly how the structure of the DNI council looks like. It may not be the most updated one, but uh, what I want to share here is that uh, there are multiple projects other than attract, like promote, uh, DNI develop, DNI retain, and other than, uh, and we also share updates with the VPs and exactly this regularity uh, with uh, our founder, uh, Shin Belosan, as a chairperson. Yeah. So talking about how we actually started it uh, around a year ago, like any other complex problem solving, we first need a plan with a goal. So uh, with, when we started this from scratch, we need to start from here too. Uh, DNI hiring scope can be very wide. So uh, we agreed with other stakeholders to focus on uh, gender diversity first as a start. Next to under the situation, uh, we did some research to understand a few main questions that I would like to share with you here on the slide. So yeah, like the first question, um, how's the diversity in our current hiring situation? Uh, we collected 
gender data of our current hiring pipeline, channels, etc. And in the in the whole NARCAR group, but uh, specifically data in Japan, considering the market difference with the US. To simplify the data analysis here, uh, we are only comparing candidates who answered male and female only. And we also found that the gender percentage may keep or change across the different job categories. And we'll further deep dive into the reasons behind after discussing with the recruiters. And for the source channel analysis here on the right hand side, uh, we found that actually direct applicants has the highest female percentage. But overall, we still definitely need uh, have a lot of room for improvement. And second question is that, how are we doing comparing to the market? So we try to collect data to compare the gender percentage of our applicants, our current members with the market effort and find out uh, the degree of gap uh, depending on each job category. So after knowing this, okay, so we know how it's doing. So we want to know uh, what areas should we focus first. So uh, we group them into two main groups depending on the gap with the market average and to uh, decide on the priority. So after this, we have a clearer overview and understand that uh, we have a lot of efforts to make to match with the market of average. And with some hypothesis we made after analyzing each job categories for now, we conclude that it's not only about uh, increasing the talent pool, but we can put the focus on here first. So we then come up with uh, shorter term strategies to increase DNI hiring and also longer term strategies in uh, employer branding. For example, in the hiring perspectives, we have done a few things like uh, checking whether is there any unconscious bias or wording problems on the JD, uh, is there a fair representation of interviewers during the process, and uh, we also updated the application form to collect uh, those data for further analysis and updated uh, our privacy policy. And uh, we also uh, strengthened the monitoring of gender percentage on our scouting activities. Yeah. And for the outreach part, uh, we have a lot to share. So internal from some like internal uh, initiatives, uh, we are trying to put on more focus on the DNI in terms of branding as well. So, um, for example, like the event you're attending here recently, we are uh, putting a lot of events and contents to our to uh, YouTube channel. So please check it out when uh, and subscribe to it if you're interested. So for these events, we don't really set a hiring goal here, but it's really more focused on the branding and to share information or just to uh, to uh, support the whole community. And um, yeah, so we can connect with more people online remotely, especially in, in the current situation. Yeah. And next, uh, many of you may have known about this event already. Uh, we have been holding the Mercury Women in Tech event series and the fifth one is coming soon. It's going to be in Japanese this time uh, spotlighting three female managers from the IT industry, from Matterpay and Accenture Interactive. So please check it out and feel free to share it with your network. Looking forward to see you there as well. So another important media of Mercar is Mercon, our company blog. We also com collaborate with the Mercon team to add more DNI related content and also maybe suggest more uh, gender minority interview blogs here. Yeah. Also, um, yeah, there are a lot of uh, DNI communities within the company, like uh, other free main uh, communities. So women, multicultural and pride community. Um, so we also collaborate with them to uh, promote uh, activities promote their uh, recent like efforts and also share more information with each other 
So for example, in the last uh, Pride Week, we worked on this Pride Week LinkedIn post project uh, with the Pride community uh, to celebrate it and hope to increase the awareness. And externally, we are sponsoring Women Who Code. Uh, we'll have some collaborations include online events and SNS tweets about us on their platform. Um, yeah, so this um, is not exactly uh, our team, but our DNI lead is also working on a lot of external collaboration on online events. And recently, they are sponsoring this uh, career awareness program. This hosted by Waffle, a general incorporated association, and Hiroshima Prefecture Board of Education, while Google and Amazon are the sponsors as well. So this program will only be available in Hiroshima this time until March of next year, but in the future, uh, they will also try to uh, market with other prefectures and introduce the program to more high school students. So we believe that we really need to bring uh, influence to the industry to make changes and um, helping collaborating with each other between companies and organizations is very important. Yeah, that is uh, all about what I want to share about our activities. So lastly, I would like to wrap up my part by sharing some challenges with Phil. And uh, yeah, so Although we have a really supportive environment and larger team now, there are still a lot of challenges we felt, like uh, improving DNI employee images on the international stage. We definitely still need a lot of work to be able to reach that. It's a long journey and no shortcut, uh, but we want to focus on what we can do now. Um, I think maybe a lot of companies face similar difficulties too so i'm looking forward to hear uh like the challenges is faced and uh hope to uh continue to learn together yeah so the journey definitely continues we'll continue to uh increase the diversity and improve our uh, hiring process and look and i believe we can also continue to think of more creative activities and program and hope to cover a larger scope of topics in the and hiring in the future. So hope my sharing with you will help you understand how we are approaching DNI hiring and uh, feel free to share your thoughts with us. Okay. Yep, that's it. So thank you so much. Uh, feel free to connect me on LinkedIn and uh, exchange ideas. So for the next part, let's welcome Jane to the stage. Thank you. Hey, uh, Jane, Jane, you're you're muted right now. Could you um, unmute and then uh, start from the top again, please? Oh, apologies. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for dropping by today. Sorry for the technical difficulty. My bad. Uh, my name is Jane, and I just joined Mirakari exactly two months ago. Uh, prior to Mirakari, my background is in talent acquisition in both agency and in-house recruitment for the past seven years. Um, I'm a very passionate DNI advocate, and I've been involved in DNI initiatives in my previous companies and also currently in Mirakari as well. Um, so based on a recent research by Glassdoor, 76% of job seekers and employees report that a diverse workforce is an important factor when evaluating job offers. So what does this mean? Um, this means that whether or not your company is interested in increasing its diversity, most candidates are going to evaluate diversity when they research about your company and during the interview process. 
Um, as I mentioned before, I just recently joined Mayor Kari and just like any other candidates, I also did my research on Mayor Kari and also of course the DNA part. Um, so I looked at Mayor Kari's LinkedIn page and found these interesting contents that are up to date and relevant to a variety of audience. And of course, I did also check the DNI page on my career side. And I also checked out the company culture page. And I recently also found out that Mayor Kari has a blog page with podcasts and articles with a wide variety of content. I feel like these resources really helped me as a candidate to understand more about how DNI is valued at Vergari, and that honestly really impacted my decision to join the company. Right. Um, so next, I'd like to explain more about Mercy Box, which is our benefit system that supports our employees to be themselves and perform to their full potential. So we introduced this benefit package in 2016, and we've added a few interesting benefits recently. For example, we cover 100% salary for maternity and paternity leave. And most recently, we're very proud to share that we are now in trial of supporting fertility treatments for our employees up to 2 million yen per child. And also post-childbirth, we are also giving fi financial support to other childcare related expenses, such as private nursery or babysitter. Um, so yeah, these things are the things that I feel really impacted my decision to join a company. And I feel like regardless of your company size and the type of roles that you're hiring for, if you're a talent acquisition spe specialist, if you wanna hire diverse talent, it's very important to make sure that you invest your time and effort into making sure that your candidate experience is diversity focused. Um, yes. So yeah, as I said earlier before. So next, I would like to invite Mahosan to the stage. Uh, thank you, Jen. Hello, I'm Maho. I'd like to talk about our team today. Let me introduce a bit about myself. I joined Mercury in November 2018 as a recruiter for the corporate side and moved to engineering hiring after a quarter because I wanted to step into global hiring. Since then, I've been working as a technical recruiter and I'm managing a team from this April. Also, I'm in a project called DNI Attract and organizing Mercury's Women in Tech events every quarter. Before joining Mercury, I was a headhunter at an, at an executive search firm and a recruiting agency. I'll be talking about global hiring as my first topic. We are aggressively hiring talented software engineers from all around the world. As the TA team, we need to continue thinking about how we can hire top tier diverse talent. This picture was taken in late 2019, right before the pandemic. We sponsored the Dev Conference in Berlin and we hired some engineering managers who are going to attend it. At that time, we scouted some engineers from Europe. So TA suggested to have a business trip to Germany with VP and engineering managers. We had some on-site interviews and casual meetings before and after the conference day. We only had a few weeks to prepare, so everything was in rush, in a rush. But in my experience, it's rare that a talent action team can suggest something new like this, involving hiring team and lead the whole project. This is just an example. Any out-of-box ideas are welcomed. You can, we can just plan something exciting together for the mission for hire, hiring diverse talent in the future. My second topic is hiring and relocation. The left picture is an article of the job board called Relocate Me, interviewing one of our engineers from India. And the picture on the right is a screenshot of briefing on entry to Japan session by TA operations team for the new joiners from overseas. It was held in October last year when the border was open for a while. When we hire from overseas, we need to make Mercury look attractive to candidates. At the same time, we are attracting candidates to their life in Japan. As HR professionals, we have to understand the basics of how visa application works how low or how high the average tax may be, social insurance, medical insurance in Japan, 
or the cost of living in Tokyo. In order to make sure that our offer is competitive enough to convince candidates to join us. Also, we are affected by the entry restriction and government policy affect government policy regarding COVID-19. It's very dynamic because we need to follow what's going on around the world, think strategically, and always be looking for the best way to welcome new hires as well. Third one is direct sourcing. In-house recruiters should be as professional and technical, technically skilled as external recruiters. We are not just doing coordinating interviews and managing hiring processes. We should be the one to find the candidates and engage with candidates directly. For the engineering hiring at Mercury Japan app, we are not working with any external agencies anymore, and we are expanding this to other areas as well. We have a lot of tips for sourcing. Let me talk about one, how, how we do it in Mercury. So we started sourcing time every week and every week for an hour. We decide one position if we, we decide one position and the recruiter in charge explain the criteria briefly at the beginning and search individually for 45 minutes. We share which source we use for searching such as LinkedIn, job boards, Twitter, Google search and so on and what kind of keywords we use for the search at the end. We started this from the end of April this year, and I had a placement with a candidate from this search initiative already in June. It's a good way for us to keep a habit of sourcing. There are three reasons we want to do this. First three, to understand the market, because we can talk about the market only after we try to source directly from the market. So after we search candidates, we can suggest to change requirements with hiring managers or change the strategy, how we can find the best talent from the market. Secondly, we can share the requirements with other recruiters and let them understand what we are looking for. And we can keep our eyes on their jobs after each session as well. Lastly, share tips and exchange knowledge. Candidates are not only found on LinkedIn or job boards. We can try other websites or SNS as well. Let's say we have five recruiters come to this direct sourcing time. There are five ways to search and we can learn from each other every time, which is a good team building activity as well. So we are hiring. We are working with um, professional RPO talent sourcers at the moment. We'd like to build a sourcing team to enhance our direct sourcing culture. For the senior recruiter position, the left one, we'd like you to work with a sourcing mindset. So we want you to have sourcing experience either as an agency recruiter or in-house recruiter with some sourcing experience. It doesn't have to have both. We also welcome people from agencies directly. It's nice to have experience in the tech industry and sourcing engineers or technical product managers, but I think good recruiters can catch up on these things fast and can make placements in many new areas. So if you are a top bidder and seeking a new challenge in the tech industry, you are the right person. So please apply from the QR code. And the QR code on the right is a JD for our talent sourcing specialist. This is more of a potential hiring. If you have some sourcing experience in any industry and want to be a specialist in hiring, this is a position for you. I think sources can work more closely and effectively with recruiters with sourcing mindset like us. And we don't want to draw a line, or draw a line and limit what sources can do and what recruiters can do. Not so many companies in Japan have a dedicated in-house sourcing team yet, but we'd like to make a direct sourcing culture here to contribute to the business. Reduced hiring cost is just a result, not a purpose when we talk about our direct sourcing in Mercury. We choose to shift to a direct sourcing strategy since we can hire more people with a better candidate experience. This also leads to a healthy ecosystem of candidates. Since there are not so many senior sourcers in the market in Japan at the moment, um, this time we are planning to accept junior sourcers and train them up. But this doesn't mean that sourcers in general are junior as a position. Our sources will still need to be very professional 
as it is a technical position with a lot of room to room to grow. Becoming a recruiter is just one of the career paths from a saucer, but the, the opportunities are endless. So it will be great if Mercury's plant sourcing specialist eventually becomes more senior to lead or manage our sourcing team in the future. For both positions, we are more than happy to have a casual chat with you. So please let us know if you are interested. Thank you and please contact me with me on LinkedIn. Next is the last speaker, our CHRO, Tatsu-san. Please come up on the stage. Thank okay, you. thank you, Maho-san. Right, uh, let me talk about you know, uh, where we are in the D&I in, in Mercury, right? Okay, uh, let me introduce myself. So my name is Tatsuo. So I joined you know, uh, Mercury 2018, December. So it's uh, almost uh, 2.5 years you know, in this company. And my background is basically you know, in the US you know, uh, based company, working for Procter & Gamble five years and working for General Electric 17 years. And before I joined Mercari, I have worked in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for the Asia Pacific and HR responsibility. So that was really uh, fun. Uh, and then when I came back to Japan, I really would like to uh, help uh, Japanese company to be uh, global. So, and then uh, the reason why I joined Mercari is because I really like the company values of Mercari. So we have uh, three values. First one is go bold. And this is basically, you know, everyone really likes it. Second one is all for one. So it's a teamwork, collaboration. And the third one is be a pro. Right. So, so these three values, you know, we really uh, would like to emphasize, and then we use, you know, uh, for any, you know, HR processes, including hiring and also after joining and also evaluation and so on. Okay. So, uh, we have currently 1,700 employees, you know, uh, Japan, US, and you know, the people in in Japan uh, actually you know people from uh, more than 40 countries, which is quite international. And then 20% uh, of you know, our employees in Japan are actually in, in Tokyo office uh, from overseas. And then we, if we look at the engineering division, and actually the more, more than 50, more, it's, it's already exceeding 50% of the engineering you know, uh, uh, fun division actually from you know, overseas. So which is really you know, uh, international. And then in the engineering division, the uh, English is a kind of common language you know, uh, no, uh, no for, the, for the daily work. Right, so uh, we actually set up the D&I you know, statement you know, uh, two years ago, and then we clearly said, so D&I is you know, our management strategy. So this is really essential, so critical to fulfill our company mission. And then we have a you know, our mission uh, to create a global marketplace, and then to, to, to really you know, realize this you know, mission, we really need diverse you know, uh, members to contribute. So that's you know, uh, why we really started you know, the D&I initiative in the company. So we really you know uh, looking at D&I, not just only you know, uh, managing the organization, organizational challenges, but also you know, we are you know, uh, also influencing how we can uh, more you know, uh, inclusive in terms of like a product development and or like a customers and also in how we can make a positive impact to society in terms of the diversity. So that's you now uh, where are how we are thinking this way. So, so our D&I strategy is you know, very simple. So it starts you know, with attract, uh, which you know, uh, we already talked about. And then the second one is, you no. Know, uh, so attract is only the uh, entry, right? So after people join Mercari, how we can engage them and retain them, those are quite important. So how we can create organizations based on trust and openness. So trust and openness is one of the value, you know, how we really you know, how see are important and, and also be inclusive. And then the last one is develop. So uh, we are shifting from uh, hiring focus organization to development oriented organization. So which means you know, really empower everyone by providing growth and learning opportunities. So help you know, people kind of accelerating you know, the growth, so their growth. So that's uh, really you know, what we are doing. And actually the rest of the HR team is currently working on an engage and develop part. 
And Engage part, for example, uh, we are running uh, engagement survey every three months. And good news, you no, know, uh, even you no, know, despite you know, the COVID nineteen situation, you know, our ENPS score, which is you no, know, um, how much you know, you know, we would like to recommend this company to other uh, people or friends, right? So actually, the this score is you no know, keep improving uh, last you no know, uh, almost last two years. So which is is a great news. And then you know, we identify, you know, okay, which factors really drives you know, the people's engagement here. And we can analyze, you know, by gender or by uh, like nationalities. Right? So, and good news, you now we have many you know, people from overseas. And actually, the, the people from overseas, you know, are uh, actually getting higher score than like uh, people uh, from Japan. So that's uh, really the good you know, news you know, for us and people really enjoying working here. And develop part is really, you no. Know, we of course you know, keep hiring the uh, people, but uh, we really think that internal development is as important as attract. And then we like to, like to you know, have a more uh, promotion from within, right? And then we started on a talent review, uh, which is every three months with the management team. We highlighted like, a key talent, you know, uh, 30 people, 40 people every time. And we, of course, you know, highlight you know, the uh, uh, di diversity, you know, inclusive you know, perspective. So which is more like a, you know, uh, people with minority, uh, minor minority profile. Uh, in terms of like, gender or in terms of nationalities, we looked at, and then uh, we really like to you know, have a more create more chance, you know, to uh, to those people. So that's how we can you know, uh, make more uh, diverse you know, talent inside the company. Okay. Right. So uh, we are in a good shift. So uh, when I joined Mercury like, almost like three years ago, actually the D and I owner. Uh, actually was you know, uh, really mainly HR. And then with uh, some of the people uh, who voluntarily helping the DI activity. So that was where we are uh, two, years, uh, two years ago, two, two years or three years ago. And then right now, yes, no, we are leading. I mean, I mean the HR is leading. We have a, we have a full-time dedicated resource uh, to lead DI. And also we have uh, assigned you know, DI folks, like for example, like a DI attract which is TA team is leading. And also we have, you know, uh, like attract, uh, not just only attract, but also develop or like engage team. So which is HLBP team or like a talent management team is also leading. But uh, we also established d and Council. So d and Council really, you know, uh, consists with the management. You know, so chairman is our CEO. And we also, you know, uh, assigned some of the VP level uh, to support, you know, this initiative. And then going forward, no, we really would like to, you know, uh, have more ownership uh, as a management, right? So not just only, so the end should not be HR agenda. So this should be the, you know, our management agenda, right? So, and then we would like to involve more people. So we would like to involve like all employees to you know, push the other initiatives going forward. So that's what we are doing. And then to do that, you know, uh, we are deploying, you know, uh, several, several training programs, you know, inside the company. So you, you can see that it's a you know, communication related, it's unconscious bias workshop, um, D&I uh, sessions, which is uh, you know, really understand and also having dialogue why the D&I is important to everyone. And then, and then, and then internal, intercultural communication because we have more than 40 nationalities you know, working in the uh, Japan office. Okay? So the one thing you know, we did you know, uh, early this year is we released you know, our you know, uh, in-house developed uh, unconscious bias workshop training. Uh, this we provided you know, uh, all managers. So this is mandatory training for all Mercury managers you know, to really you know, minimize, you know, uh, uh, really avoid you know, the unconscious bias inside the organization. But we really think you know, this is really not just only for our organization, but this should be more for, you know, for society. So we openly you know, shared on this you know, material you know, um, with you know, uh, free of charge. Uh, and then you know, we released this you know, uh, to both in Japanese and also in English. And actually it's really you know, creating positive impact to other companies. You know? So many companies really you know, inquiring us you know, how to do it, or we, we like to do it. So it's good. You know? We are seeing more you know, positive chain reactions happening in, their in, this, in, in this space, and then uh, we can lead and we can contribute to the society uh, in this topic, okay? 
So that's about it about the and I and where we are in the Mercari. So thank you for listening. Now back to Jessica. Oh Nick. I will take it away. Thank you, Tatsu-san, for uh for running through that. Um and yeah, a big round of applause uh, for our speakers today. If you're at home, give them a quick clap. Uh, so we'll be going into our Q&A time uh, now for roughly maybe um, 10 to, to 15 minutes to address some of the questions. Uh, we've already had uh, a couple of questions um, throughout our presentation so far. So I'll go ahead and run through some of those. And then uh, if you have any other questions or if you have questions for specific speakers, uh, maybe you want to hear a little bit more information about what they went over, feel free just to include that um, next to your question. And we can kind of uh, call people up and um, put people off stage as well to, to answer those questions. So um, the the first question from, from Harold, uh, how do you know, uh, or sorry, how do you know you do a good job finding diverse uh, skills slash backgrounds. Right, um, so when it comes to gauging really, uh, if, you're, if you're doing a really great job in, in finding these things, there's, there's a couple of ways to, to go about it. Um, one of the ways could be to look at uh, the satisfaction from the hiring managers, uh, as well as the teams that you're hiring for. And that's kind of an initiative that you can go about um, on your own with those specific or individual teams uh, that you work with to see if they um, are doing well with the people that you're hiring. Uh, are they generating a lot of new ideas to work on new projects, things like that. or um, we could do kind of a basic kind of like internal employee satisfaction surveys as well. Uh, we also had one of our speakers, Jess, uh, cover a bit about this. Um, I know that some of the data on there was, was covered. I think the main point to kind of drive, drive home on there uh, is basically the, the specific data that we're measuring uh, rather than kind of the numbers itself. Um, so that's the first question and, and thank you for your question. Uh, I'll go ahead and move on to the next. Um, so yeah, uh, we have what kind of initiatives are in place at Mercari to minimize the gap between seasoned professionals and Gen Zers so that uh, you can not only attract diverse talents, uh, but to retain them. Um, so I think really this this can fall a bit more uh, on on how you conduct a process. So I think here at Mercari we have a really transparent process when we're when we're interviewing with candidates. If we're sending out an offer to somebody or we're kind of going over the contents of the job description to be very kind of clear um, and, and straightforward about the responsibilities assigned for the position um, especially also when you're talking about comp and how that correlates to the expectations of the role as well. This way you don't really run into any kind of unsuspecting uh, surprises uh, after people join into the company and you're able to kind of close that, that gap there um, so that people really kind of know what their, uh, their expectation will be when joining into the company itself. Um, so thank you for your question. Uh, let's see what else. Okay. Um, the next question is, how have you fostered an inclusive culture to engage and retain non-Japanese speaking employees? Have you overcome any biases uh, around requiring Japanese for some roles when hiring? Um, do we want to, to call, uh, Jess or, or Jane up to answer this one? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. yes, we can answer this. Uh, hmm. so thank you, Anna, for your question. Um, so I think, uh, a few things that we're doing here at Maricari, we have a team of translators and interpreters as well that is supporting us in most meetings as well, most uh, 
all hands and most um, global meetings are available in both English and Japanese. And for the second question is how do we overcome any biases regarding Japanese requirement for some roles? I think because of the nature of our open roles that are majority more on a technical side than on the sales side, we have more flexibility on the Japanese requirement. And I think as um, Nick has presented earlier, we also have um, all types of um, all types of um, employer resource group internally that is related to diversity inclusion, pride, and all of the other things. I think that also help in fostering an inclusive culture for our non-Japanese speaking employees. Maybe just want to add something as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, maybe I I also want to add we have some programs like uh, Yasashi Communication Workshop uh, to help uh, both uh english speakers and japanese speakers to uh learn to communicate in a lower context style so if so to encourage people to use both languages uh i think it's it's not only about retaining non-japanese speaking employees it's also about in including like both sides or even like different language speakers so yeah i think this is a really interesting program that we're doing and it's working pretty good uh, in in the organization. Thank you for your question. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, let's see what else do we have here. Um, okay, yeah. So there there are a couple of of questions around the unconscious bias uh, training workshops. I'll go ahead and bring um, Tatsu-san up to to talk a little bit more about that and hopefully answer your questions there. Yeah, well, thank you for asking. So unconscious bias, right? So this really exists uh, in any uh, organization. So that's uh, you know, the starting point. And then now, uh, as we have more like, diverse people in the organization, so we introduce you know, uh, this workshop and we really set you know, uh, this as a mandatory uh, for the managers uh, because managers really in charge of uh, like hiring decisions as well as uh, like uh, appraisal. Like evaluation, so they you know, must you know, uh, they must avoid you know, any unconscious bias. So that's uh, you know, why why we started from uh, from managers. So for example, like uh, you know, when we are making hiring decision, like first we you know, I you know, found out you know, if the uh, candidate uh, is like a gender minority, which is like a female, and then if like interview all interviewer are uh, male. Then no, may, they there is no, there may be <laughs> the no unconscious bias, no, no, right happening, right? So and then to avoid that, like we sh must have like a mixed you no know, gender interviewer. So that's also one of the things you know, we can do. And then the other thing is you no, know, of course like a you no know, uh, English speaker or Japanese speaker. You no, know, we uh, some you no, know, we also identified you no. Know, uh, uh, in terms of like a candidate experience and also in terms of the you know, the quality of the assessment you now if we use you no know, translator for the interview um, actually you no know, those the candidate experience score and also like assessment quality score drops so that's also you know, we found out and then okay you no know, uh, let's you no know, uh, really you no know, remove those like ob obstacle and then you no know, for the english speaker candidate let's have an english speaker interviewer so that's you no know, quite simple, right? But uh, no, no, we found out, and then we really you no know, changed our process, you no, know, and that's really you no know, uh, removing you know, the unconscious bias as much as possible. So that's also the the, the uh, sim similar things happening after joining the uh, Merukari. So when we are you no, know, uh, for example, uh, making a decision in terms of like assigning manager of who should be like a next manager, right? So and then you no, know, we you no know, have a internal promotion like a recommendation letter, and then the, this recommendation letter really you know has a checkpoint. You no, know, do you consider the minority talent? You no, know, when you are assigning you know, uh, the uh, assigning the uh, someone in this position. So this is a really checkpoint. Really reminds us. You no, know, okay. Uh, should we just you know make hey you know. Uh, these are you know, uh, my you know, uh, colleagues you know, who are currently who are working uh, with with me long long time, and that's really he he must be the 
uh, appropriate candidate for, for this position. No, no, you should not you know, think that way. We should look at the you know, organization broadly, right? And then we should, you know, of course, you know, consider the minority talent, and then we make a final decision uh, as, a, as a fair uh, judgment. So that's the you know, kind of process you know, change what we also introduced you know, after you know, having like a bias workshop. So it's not just only workshop, but also related to the you know, HR process change. Yeah, hope this answers your question. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, that um, hopefully covered uh, most of the, the contents around uh, unconscious bias. I know that it's it's quite a, a wide area, but um, if you still have kind of other questions there, feel free to, to continue entering those in. Uh, for some of the questions on there with kind of shorter answers, uh, we are responding in the comments. So um, please feel free to take a look um, there. Um, let's see what else we have. One moment, please. Okay. Um, so for the question about uh, some companies um, strip name and age and related dates from CVs for interviews, uh, I can bring uh, Jess up to, to talk a little bit more about that. Hi, yeah, thank you for your question about uh, the information uh, management, I think. So we, uh, in internally in our ATS, we separate those uh, DNI sensitive information, including uh, nationality and uh, gender, or maybe any other um, like uh, d disability or health issue uh, supported if they need. So we will separate these questions in a different place and not shown to the hiring managers or the interviewers to uh, to try to uh, prevent any more uh, unconscious bias during the process. Yeah, that's a really uh, good question. And um, yeah, we definitely want to continue to work on putting more uh, efforts into this part as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jess. We'll continue to, to dig a little bit more into the questions here. <clears throat> so we have a couple of questions around um, disability hiring. Let's see here. If I can bring something up. Can we? Oh, hello. Yes. Um, yes, I think we have a question. Uh, we have a few questions regarding disability hiring. Um, we actually have um, a few specific recruiters that are designated to do disability hiring. Um, and currently, the panelists today is mainly on the tech recruiting side. Um, so I think maybe, uh, Tatsu san, you might want to answer this from a um, HR leader perspective. Yes, yes, no, we have a no disability, uh, pe uh, hiring you know, the people with you no know, disability, and uh, this really you no know, uh, process you know, handled really carefully. And basically, you know, uh, right now, you know, we are hiring you know, uh, people with disability for the HR function. So, hiring managers are basically you know, uh, HR managers you know, who know uh, the sensitivity of the information. So, that's one. And second one is, you no, know, uh, no, of course, you no, know, uh, we like to know the uh, capability. Uh, of the person, no. But uh, also, also, you know, we are uh, fitting. Uh, we are really checking the uh, culture fit. So, which is really the most important <laughs> uh, to in in the hiring process. 
So, so regardless of you know, disability or not, you know, we are you know, asking how much you know, uh, the, this person's personality really fits you know, our company values you know, and cultures. So that's the most important. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so yeah, that covered the uh, disability aspect of things. Let's see. Uh, we did have uh, we did have um, a question around kind of salary structure, market price, um, adjusting salary, market salary structure, and overseas salary structure. Uh, so I, I mean. There's there's not uh, too much we can we can really go into very deeply uh, around this topic. I think that um, when you look at uh, you know tech companies, um, you tend to try to offer kind of a lot of more competitive uh, packages. Especially in Mercari's case, we had um, one of our previous speakers, uh, Maho, go over um, some of the aspects around um, our relocation. So uh, we'd have things, for example, like relocation packages to keep things really competitive. Um, obviously, things included like uh, visa support. Um, and uh, yeah, we really kind of keep an eye on what the kind of standard um, in the market is, is looking like and try to, again, make our, our offers as competitive um, as possible in order to compete. Uh, since we are hiring not only within Japan, but uh, on a global scale as well. So I, I hope that um, answers your question. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, any other questions from the audience? Please feel free to put into the comments. Any additional questions? Okay. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, bring Jess up to talk a little bit more about um, the, uh, the kind of goals around uh, d and and the hiring in that aspect. Hi, uh, Ken. Thank you for this question. And yeah, um, uh, definitely tech industry, especially software engineer roles, uh, has the most. One maybe could I could say it's one of the most uh, lower lowest num numbers in uh, this gender uh, equality. Um, yeah. So our approach here uh, you can see also from from my part that we don't want to exactly set a hiring goal here because uh without enough um uh, understanding towards dni in the whole group from everyone uh it will just cause a uh, confusion and uh maybe uh misunderstandings so we we are now at a phase uh as like uh, we set goals for the talent pool, like it's kind of like a process API. So it's uh, not directly about how much uh, hiring goals uh, concerning the different gender, uh, but we want to set KPIs like um, like diversity in our talent pool, in uh, especially in some tech positions or maybe uh, in some KPIs in our candidate survey, we want to uh, aim for high satisfaction uh, for both uh, gender or all the other gender. Yeah. So this is our approach about this and hope it kind of answers your questions and feel free to let us know if you have any more. Thank you. 
Great. Thank you, Jess. OK, uh, so we'll take one more question uh, as the, the final question um, for today. Um, goes around kind of the uh, the question from Carlos here on the pandemic and, and remote work. Uh, so there's there's really not too much uh, detail we can we can get into this in terms of, of talking about um, the numbers uh, obviously but you know again we see uh, people with um, with a different preference on work styles uh, we see people who a mix of people who prefer working from home or prefer working from the office or people who prefer kind of like a hybrid uh, like myself um, with maybe the option to, to kind of stay home as well so um, it's really kind of a, a mixed a mixed bag here where um, we try to to kind of take those those differences of preferences um, into account. So uh, when we kind of look at, at our work style right now, I mean, most of us are, are still at home um, as the, the situation in, in Japan doesn't really uh, get that um, good. Unfortunately, it seems to, to be getting a bit worse. On, uh, but yeah, it, it's tough to, to kind of gauge that because everybody has different different kinds of preferences. Um, but again, that's something that we can learn more about uh, in one of the previous things that I mentioned before, which is about um, kind of the employee uh, engagement surveys, um, kind of trying to figure out uh, how Mercari can align itself as an organization moving forward to match those preferences. Uh, of each of our employees individually, not just kind of box and, and group everyone into one specific work style, but to try and be a bit more flexible. Um, so I hope that does answer your question. And uh, once again, thank you very much for um, for asking. So uh, that's all uh, that we have for Q&A. Thank you all so much for, for taking the time to join into our event today. We really appreciate it. Um, oh, hello. Ah, yes, we have all of our, our speakers. Uh, please come on stage. Uh, one final um, round of applause for our speakers. If you're at home, clap it up. Uh, we have a survey. Uh, if you can um, please take the time to fill it in. We have the QR code up here on screen. Uh, if you don't have a QR code reader, you can access it via the link in the comments section. Your feedback definitely helps us kind of improve these events moving forward. Uh, usually only takes about a minute to fill out. So please, um, if you do have time, uh, kindly do that. Uh, if you want to kind of get a better idea of what's going on at, at Mercari, kind of stay in touch with us. The bottom three QR codes there, we have our career site, our Instagram page, and our LinkedIn um, can give you insight more on what's happening uh, here at Mercari and um, the latest updates around careers at Mercari. So once again, um, thank you all for joining into our event today. We'll leave this slide up for, for a little bit so um, you can take some time to, to get the QR code. But uh, we hope to see you in the next event. And for those who are based in Japan, have a great rest of your short week. Uh, for those not, best of luck uh, in the rest of your week. Bye-bye. Have a nice week. Bye-bye.